I am a preacher. And I am a preacher because I am a believer. I need to tell you what a believer is because the word believer today is so misused, misunderstood. Everybody believes in God of some kind. Well, that's not what we're talking about, is it? We're talking about regeneration, being born again by God's Spirit, a measure of conviction of sin, uh, a measure of repentance, uh, faith, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I believe I can say that that is true of me. And I'm addressing you, and I, I'm addressing you on the basis, being in this special meeting here, I'm addressing you on the basis that this is true of you. Now, I say I am a preacher because I am a believer. That means if you are a believer, you are a preacher too. Now, I don't mean you stand in the pulpit at Hope Chapel or Providence or somewhere like that. But I am convinced from my Bible that every believer is a preacher. Every believer is a priest. Not in the sense of Roman Catholicism, but a spiritual priest to God. You preach when you talk to somebody, your family, your friends, when you converse with one another. When you say spiritual things, you are preaching. Yeah? Agree. Of course, standing up like this is preaching. Okay. Perhaps you can't do that. No. But nevertheless, if you're a believer, you are a preacher. Now, I hope you've worked out what you're supposed to be doing. Now, there are many things to preaching. Uh, we want to build up other Christians, don't we? We want to build up the saints, sanctify them. We want to glorify God in that. But I hope we all have the desire to see sinners saved by our preaching. Nothing could give us greater joy, surely, than to know that somebody to whom we have spoken has heard the gospel and gone through that experience and become true believers. So we're on the same page, right? Well, if we're going to reach sinners with the gospel, we've got to decide uh, how we're going to do it. We've got to think about that. Now, the only way you can find out is look in the Bible. That's the only way we can find out. Now, are you agreed with me? Let's just see. This is my position. As I read my Bible, the Bible tells me that as a believer, I am trying to reach out to a fallen, lost world. That the individuals I'm trying to reach are sinners. I'm a sinner too, but I'm a sinner saved by grace. They are still lost in their sins. That they are dead in their sins. They are hostile to the word of God. They uh, don't like, let's put it that way, it's worse, they hate the gospel. They may be respectable, nice, decent people, but the people I'm trying to reach are dead in their sins and under the wrath of God. And I want to rescue them. And you do the same, I hope. Now, I'm going to be more specific, more clear, more definite when I write something. I'm writing something on this and I'll publish. But I, I, I will be slightly vague now, but I'll fill in the details uh, in my book. But in about the 70s in America, people noticed that the church was failing, believers were failing to reach sinners with the gospel. I think we found it here too in this country. I think it's true to say that we would have to confess that we're not reaching sinners with the gospel and we aren't seeing many conversions and we deplore that. Now these people, they were good people, they began to look at it and what they began to see was this, that if they looked at, well in their country it was Walmart or Pepsi Cola or something like that, but in our country it'd be Marks and Spencers or Tesco's, if you look at Tesco's, they do wonderfuls with their sales. They really get customers in and they're buying their stuff. What do they do? How do they reach their customers? 
Perhaps we could copy their methods. Some of you will think I'm making this up, but I am not. These people said, we notice how these big businesses work, and what do they do? They start with the customer. They think, what will attract the customer? What does the customer need? Now, the word need is what I want to talk about. The word need is very difficult because there's another word very close to it called want. Now, in English, need and want are very similar words. I can make them interchangeable. If I have a want of something, that's a need, a lack. But very often, what want is and what need is are different things. I need something, but I want something else. Now, let me illustrate this. Let me illustrate this. You've heard of Martin Lloyd-Jones. Now, Martin Lloyd-Jones was a doctor, a physician, and he used to treat patients. And he gave up treating patients, even though he had a glittering career. Why? Because he was telling the patient what they needed. But his testimony was that these people wouldn't do what he said because they didn't listen to their needs they listen to their wants. Now let me explain to you. A GP may say to a man, you've got to give up smoking. Or you've got to give up all these cream cakes. That's your need. But his want says, I want the cream cakes. Are you getting me? Mm. Right. Lloyd-Jones gave up. Because it was no good telling men about their needs they were interested in their wants, their likes. Mm. Now these people saw that the shop people were doing this. Tesco's don't give you what you need, they give you what you will buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these people copied it. Mm -hmm. And it's come into England. And it's come very close. And many churches are buying into this. They do not speak the gospel to sinners telling them what they need they tell them what they want I'm going to develop this again further in a book I'm doing it that method is doomed to failure first of all it's unbiblical but it's doomed to failure and I'll tell you why this is my text I've got a text for you I'm only going to be very brief don't worry if you put the Customer, as they call them, they don't call them sinners anymore, they call them community. If you put these people in the driving seat, and they tell you what they'll listen to, what they will like, mm. then you will never preach the gospel to them. Now I'll tell you why. <clears throat> My text for you is this, is 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. You need to look it up, you'll know it. Let me start you off. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him. I'll say that again then. I thought you would be able to say it. Well, there you are. You've got a text to learn. You've got the wrong translation. I, got, I thought that was authorized. <laughs> That's the authorized. Here's the authorized. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness yeah. to him. Mm. That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Mm. All right, then let's see if you know Romans 8, 7. This man, the man, the natural man, he hates the things of God. Mm. He is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. He does not want it. Mm. What am I saying? I'm nearly finished. If you listen to the customer the man out there, you will tell him what he likes. And what does he like? Entertainment, fun, diversion, mm. all that kind of thing, food. But if you listen to what he needs, mm. he needs to know that he's a sinner. He needs to be convicted. He needs to be converted. He needs to be born again. He needs to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I say to you, these two different methods are very different. The old way of the Bible way is to preach Christ 
and him crucified. Paul said that in that same chapter. He said, I am determined to know nothing among you, not what they want, but they're going to get what they need, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Today, that's changing. And men are preaching what sinners want. That will bring in huge numbers, but the harvest will be horrendous. I'm saying this, I know it's, perhaps you don't find it very edifying, but we need to think about this very seriously, my friend. Have confidence in the gospel of the grace of God. Of course, men won't like it, but you know, that was like you one day. You were born like that, like me. And God changed our hearts. And let us pray to him that he will work through the preaching of the gospel and convict and convert sinners. Amen. Amen.